it's it's preparing to start and it will in just a moment um so bef before we get started with the meeting i have a just a couple housekeeping things i need to do and i'll do those and so uh, we do have one person in the public who i'm going to bring over uh onto the uh as a panelist here in a few minutes because uh, he's he wants to share something with the uh, group and um but we take public comment even with the virtual meetings uh, and, and we would do that each meeting that you have would be allowed for public comment. Uh, we take public comment right now in one of four ways. Somebody can drop something off at the box out front. Uh, they can send an email to public comment at newtowntownship.org. Uh, again, that's public comment, all one word, newtowntownship.org uh, and make their public comment that way. They can also raise their hand uh, virtually uh, by attending the meeting as an attendee, uh, and they can also uh, do it through their phone. If by chance they're having trouble uh, making public comment or raising their hand, uh, they can send a message to public comment at newtowntownship.org, give us their name and their and or their phone number, and we would recognize them for public comment. So um, I've done that. Uh, typically, I would turn it over to a chair, and since we don't have a chair quite yet, uh, uh, I'm going to actually turn it over for a minute to, if Leonard's still there, he turned off his thing, so maybe he's had to step away. Uh, oops, there he is. Uh, I, know, uh, I know Leonard's incredibly excited, as am I, about this committee, uh, so I'm going to let Leonard talk a few minutes uh, for anything that he would like to say to you as a group. And then we're gonna spend some time just looking at the ordinance as a group. Um, and then, bef then we'll go ahead and have you um, select a chair, a vice chair and a secretary. Uh, and I, I, I'm waiting on that only so that you, because it's the first time out, once we go through the ordinance, you may all say, I don't wanna, I don't wanna be the chair, or I don't wanna be the vice chair or something like that. And you would know what you were getting into beforehand. Uh, but for right now, Leonard and I will kind of assist in leading the meeting and then uh, we'll get that to a point. And then from that point, it'll be turned over to you as a group. Uh, Leonard is the uh, board liaison to this uh, committee. And uh, for right now, I'm going to be the staff liaison until we get things going. So uh, at some point, we'll probably turn this over to another staff member who's way more involved in trees than I am. So, uh, but I wanted, I wanted to help get us started because a lot of administration things have to get put out first. So Leonard, if you will have anything that you'd like to say, I know you're very <coughs> excited about this committee, so. And I, and I always have something to say, Steve, in addition to being <laughs> So first off, let me say congratulations to all of you on being selected for the Shade Tree Commission. Um, as Steve said, I am extremely excited about this and I know the rest of the Board of Supervisors, including the township are excited about this. This committee and the individuals that applied for it and all of you that were subsequently elected or selected, I should say, uh, it was a very competitive applicant pool. I mean, I'm not saying that to, to give anyone an ego boost, but the, the individuals who were, even the individuals who were not selected, it was a very um, competitive applicant pool. Just sitting here today, we have an individual, Trish, who is from the Department of the Interior, who uh, is a marine biologist with the Fish and Wildlife Department. We have Rob Vanicola, who is a registered arborist. If you just want to give a little wave there, Rob. <laughs> registered arborist. Carol Wagner, and, and Rob also owns his own tree and landscaping company. Um, Carol Wagner is a horticulturalist at Haverford College. Awesome. Carol wants to give a wave, right? There you go, Carol. Thanks, Carol. Tom Tomasco, who has a uh, landscaping business, a small business owner, um, who's had that for about 30 years and employs over 45 individuals. And Mr. John Rice, who comes to this board with the experience of being on the Lower Marion Shade Tree Commission, as well as being the grounds coordinator for, and John, I keep forgetting what this estate is called. What is the estate called? You're, John, you're, you're muted. You're, is it Appleford? Yes? All right. So, um, as I said, not only am I excited for this, the rest of the board is, and so is the township. And, and I say the rest of the township because as many of you know, we just went through a strategic plan. And from that strategic plan, we had 
five major initiatives that were pulled out of that. These initiatives is what we as a board of supervisors are going to use to govern the township moving forward. It essentially was taking a pulse of the residents and saying, if you had a chance to change something in your township, or if you wanted your township to, to move in a different direction, what would it be? And the, the second uh, initiative, the most uh, requested or most sought after and most commented uh, uh, topic were supporting an environmental initiatives. 91% of the individuals who applied, who, who filled out their strategic plan um, said that they agreed or strongly agreed that supporting environmental initiatives were important. And from that, the expected outcomes for our strategic plan are protecting streams, wetlands, appropriate trees and vegetation are reestablished, protected and preserved, open spaces preserved and reclaimed, and stormwater management is maintained, uh, stormwater management to maintain a sustainable community by reducing flooding and supporting healthy streams and rivers, which obviously having a strong tree canopy will do. The Shade Tree Commission, as you all know, is gonna be responsible for the protection and preservation of our township's tree canopy. You will be charged with reviewing subdivision plans and other building applications for compliance with our shade tree ordinance and recommending appropriate modifications to those plans to make sure it complies with what our ordinance says. This committee right now, and I'm not saying it because I'm your board liaison, is arguably instantaneously the most influential board that this township has because of the strong community desire to see us preserve more of our open space, but also our tree canopy. This committee will have a uh, heavy hand and impact in any project moving forward in this township. And you as the inaugural board will have the amazing opportunity to set the tone moving forward for how this board will operate in the next 40 to 50, 60 years. The, the last thing that I, that I want to touch on is in addition to preserving and protecting this tree canopy, this shade tree ordinance is something that the Environmental Advisory Council worked uh, on for a long time. And so I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you to them for their help and for their guidance on getting this up and running. Obviously, thank you to the rest of my colleagues for supporting it as well. And, and, and not just you who, who have been selected, but everyone else who applied. But this ordinance will also, in addition to preserving um, the wooded areas to prevent what we now see down closer to Edgemont, where that entire swath of land is clear cut, where we see up on 252 on the Marple side next to that Presbyterian church, clear cut land to hold developers and contractors accountable to prevent them from, quite frankly, defacing our township by these reckless bulldozing mechanisms and also you know is extremely relevant for my neighborhood in the heights it's preventing individuals who don't get their way through zoning or other um, township applications from clear cutting their land out of spite the township never had any sort of mechanism to do that and coincidentally this gets approved at the same time that a lot of those things are going on and that's why i say this board is arguably right from the bat the most influential and most important board so I just wanna say, I look forward to working with all of you. I look forward to getting to know all of you on a more personal level. Um, I look forward to meeting all of you in person eventually. Um, you all have my township email address. Uh, I will also send an email tomorrow to make sure you have my cell phone number in case anybody needs it. But uh, as your board liaison, I, my goal is to be here at every, you know, every meeting I can attend. When I ran for the board of supervisors, I told my wife it was two meetings a month and that has quickly turned into about 12. So I'm getting there close to Steve Neath on how many meetings I'm attending. So the, I, I, I won't have perfect attendance, but I'll be here um, to also bounce ideas off of. This is gonna be a collaborative relationship. I don't want you to think Leonard's on the board of supervisors, we can't talk to him. Absolutely not. I want to be used as a resource just as the board of supervisors is gonna use all of you as a resource. So with that, I will stop talking. I will let uh, this meeting commence. Um, and just for the pleasure, I will have to leave at seven o'clock because I have another engagement. But again, thank you all. And I look forward to getting this off the ground with you. Great. Thanks, Leonard. Thank you. Um, just in case anybody doesn't know, uh, I'm Steve Neese and I'm the township manager. And like I said, for now, I will be uh, helping get this uh, kicked off and started uh, in, 
in the future, we may bring somebody in from our public works department to be working with you who is actively involved in our trees that will probably bring a better sense of what's going on with the trees on our property than I may have because they're out dealing with it every day. So um, anyway, I just, but we wanna make sure we help you get started administratively. And, and so, uh, and again, as Leonard has said, anytime you need to reach out to, to me or any of the staff, we're here to help you achieve what you're uh, setting out to do. Um, on our agenda tonight, uh, I believe that we have set up, oops, got a screen coming up. Uh, uh, we have a screen coming up that basically allows for uh, uh, a call to order um, and a roll call. I'm going to hold off on that. I'm going to go ahead and jump to public comment, um, allow public comment. Uh, and uh, when we get through that, uh, we're going to go through the ordinance. And then when we when we will call full order, when we get to the spot um, where we can put somebody in charge to take over and do that because I don't think that I have the authority to call this meeting to order as the township manager. So um, so uh, we'll go ahead and take public comment. So I'm going to allow Paul Seligson uh, to address uh, us. I know he had called Tom Tommaso uh, with a, a thing that he has and I suggested that he come over. So Paul? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear us? All right. You yeah. want to go ahead and uh, share what you were going to share? Okay, uh, yes, thank you very much. Uh, Steve, I sent you just now, I, I quickly scanned, I just rifled through all of my things and scanned you, uh, and I don't know if you can share it or not, but it might be coming through momentarily. So first of all, I wanna say that, that uh, Leonard and I, we were both on the EAC, and it was around the year, I would say 2005 to 2007, somewhere around there. So this was already being talked about, a tree commission was being talked about, at that time. And I, we, I'm very, very grateful to see you guys formed and to hear of your really, really uh, uh, strong backgrounds and, and how um, well-versed you are in the subject of trees. Um, uh, so I'm sort of jumping ahead a little bit, but there is an MS4. The, the Newtown Township was signaled by MS4, which is, uh, you know, the four S's, sanitation, sewer, stormwater, and something else. Um, and we were, uh, Newtown Township was asked to sort of help uh, uh, get control of their stormwater issues. And, and the township fashioned a reply, and it's now, the reply is back to the Commonwealth. And, it, the, and part of that reply is the planting of trees. And, um, you know, Steve and, and Leonard can talk more about it. I think originally we said 500, now we're saying plant a lot of trees. Um, and, and coincidentally with that, um, uh, I came up with together with the Newtown Square and Bloom Committee, um, the idea of planting street trees on Westchester Pike 252 and St. Albans Avenue and Circle. <clears throat> and with Westchester Pike being widened, uh, and St. Albans Circle having a gather in the circle committee of its own, which has not yet decided which way it wants to go, uh, we are left with 252. So this all happened in January, February of 2020, earlier this year. Um, I went around and I found a corporate sponsor. And the, I asked for a sum of money and the corporate sponsor uh, countered with a different sum of money. <laughs> Um, so I, I roughly have like $5,000 and it's from Boron, a pharmaceutical company that does homeopathic pharmaceutical company. And they're on North Campus uh, Boulevard and it's very generous of them. <clears throat> they just emailed me last week and they said, are you planning to plant your trees this year, Paul? And I said, I doubt it, you know, COVID and all that and widening of streets, I don't think so. And then they responded by saying, well, you know, we're not sure that the, uh, the offer is gonna be on the table for 2021. Or if it is on the table, it might be a smaller offer, much fewer pickings. So that has me really mobilized. And with that, I went into a, I went from zero to 180 miles an hour. And I'm really working hard on getting uh, especially uh, 252 South. So that would be from Niemeyer's and Colonial Animal Hospital down to Gentilly's uh, planted with street trees. And there is a, uh, if you can just, there's a, a, a graphic of 
like the frontage of Niemeyer's, how it might look if it had some street trees. Now, Niemeyer's, we haven't asked yet. Where, where I have asked and received positive commitment is I have asked from uh, the Gulf gas station and they agree for two, possibly three trees. I have asked uh, Fran Gentili and he owns a great deal of property. Um, he said no to initially to the 90 South uh, uh, Newtown Street Road. 90 South would be where the, um, um, that's an office building where there are insurance companies and that's right opposite Mary Jane Lane, opposite Gentilly's. But he said no, because he says there is a, a retention basin and he would need township approval. And if the township agreed to have trees in that basin or in the surrounding, or, then he would agree to it. He said yes to, um, uh, he owns uh, Enterprise Rent-A-Car. They have two trees in front of them that are growing slightly. Next to Enterprise Rent-A-Car is another plot of land. And that is, there's a sign, it's for sale by Bright Realty, B-R-I-T-E. And he said, uh, uh, we, we may be having an offer. I don't know yet. He hasn't seen the offer. But he said, uh, uh, if you want to plant some trees there, go ahead. Then he said, um, uh, if you want to plant some trees, he owns Malone's Auto. You want to plant some trees, go ahead there. So, Steve, there is a, 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 if you go further into my documents, you'll see one with a lot of dots. And that's where, uh, yeah. And so that's 252 South, running from, uh, from 12 o'clock to like, seven o'clock is Westchester Pike and running from seven o'clock to like three o'clock is 252 South. And to the right is Gentilly's and to the left is Colonial Animal Hospital and then the Boron gas station right across the street. So I have, so he's, he has said four, four trees for sure. Yes, Paul, maybe, uh, maybe six. Gulf has said two, that's eight. Um, and now I'm asking, and I just am in the process of asking Cavallo um, uh, Auto uh, Specialists, and mm -hmm. they're mulling it over, they're thinking about it, they have not gotten back to me, but they would have six spots. Um, and then there's Europa Pizza, and then there's Niemeyer's, and uh, Leonard and I have a plan to go to uh, Niemeyer's, he knows somebody at Europa. So, I mean, the, the plan is such, I mean, I don't know how many we're going to get, how many yeses we're going to get or not. So hang on. Now I'm, I'm coming to my questions. So the question is, should I get root bald trees or 25 gallon container trees? And, and I'm getting, I mean, I don't know. And see, that's where you guys can kind of help me is the price for a root ball tree, roughly $350 each question mark. Depends on the size. I'm sorry. Depends on the tree. Depends on the size and the tree. So these are trees that would be drought resistant, and they would get to 25 to 30 feet, not higher. I'm I'm picking trees. There is a tree specimen list in the uh, stuff that uh, in the material that I sent to uh, Steve. Um, I'm picking deliberately small trees so that they don't overwhelm the, and they never go into the electric wires. They might reach into the. Uh, uh, Comcast and into the uh, that's the, and that's the tree specimen list. Um, they might reach into the Comcast and Verizon wires, but they wouldn't reach any higher. <laughs> <laughs> well, that helps. Uh, so when you say it depends on the size, do you mean the size of the tree when it's mature, or the size of the no. tree that we get? Think that we get. Yeah. I'm to speak. <laughs> so. It depends on the size of the tree. How about salt tolerant? Yeah, they're all all of these are all salt tolerant. Salt tolerant. So I'm I've worked with PennDOT and New York City uh, Parks Parks Department. I, I pulled it off of the uh, uh, off of the web, and then and then I filtered it all through Steve Mastardi as well. So it's PennDOT, New York City Parks Department, Steve Mastardi. I mean, this is the distillation. And these are the tree, and I'm open to suggestions. And if you say some of these trees that I have listed are absolutely wrong, I, uh, they're going to fall off the list. And if you say I've forgotten something, I will add it to the list. Um, but but my, here's the, the, my dilemma is I need to move very quickly. 
uh, you can plant trees, is my understanding, and this is a question sort of, uh, from you can plant up until November 15th, November 20th, and perhaps until December 10th. Do you guys agree with that? Yes. I do, yes. yes. You can plant any time as long as the ground's not frozen. Okay, well, thank yeah. you. Uh, um, so if I didn't, uh, is it cheaper? I, I'm being told that a, a 25 gallon container tree is cheaper than a root ball tree. And in, yeah, and you depends can, on the grower. I'm sorry? Depends on the grower. I, I found sometimes container trees more expensive than root ball trees. Well, one other thing about uh, a containerized tree is you usually have most of the root system. If you get a ball and burlap tree, you might not have as many of the roots, so you might have a better chance of them surviving if you get the containerized tree. Okay. Well, but it's also a contained environment. <clears throat> it's not really suited for, they're, they're growing ideal conditions, whereas a field grown, they're a little tougher. Uh, true. It also depends upon who's planting and whether they know how to loosen up the root ball or whether That's they just a fact. pull the pot That's off a... and stick it in the ground. Yeah, it, That's it, a fact. That can, yeah, it's got pros and cons both ways. So far, all of the locations where, I'm, where I've been given the green light are ground. It's all soil right now where the trees are being thought of to be planted. There are, you know, there are people that have asphalt and cement and I have not yet gotten, uh, I haven't asked the question of those people, but in that question, I'm gonna have to uh, excavate a three and a half by three and a half square, take out the dirt, put in more organic, more enriched soil, I suppose. Is that, and, I, I, and what I need from you is your feedback. I'm sorry to lay this on you like right now. Do you guys agree with what I'm saying? Absolutely. I mean, that's the biggest concern in my view. It's the soil that they're gonna go into. Right. If it, so is there a difference in watering according to your, uh, do root ball trees, once you plant them, you can kind of let them go by uh, and they're on their own, they're, no. they do okay. Or do you need to water no. them as well? You'll have they, to water them for the first water. couple of years. Uh, excuse me, how many years? Two. Uh, I would say yeah, three. Two. You're three, yeah. And how many how many years of watering for container? Same. Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Paul, we'll get you a watering can. Well, <laughs> boy, if, I mean, if Caballo, you know, I'm Caballo owns that whole field right next to them between them and and uh, Colonial Animal Hospital. They've done a really great job of, of having street trees right in front of their shop. But what I'm gonna be asking for from them, what, I'm, what is being asked is would they consider trees? And it's up on a sort of a little bit of a plateau. There's a stone wall and it's up on beyond that stone wall. That's what I'm um, um, asking of them. I don't have a pic, I had a picture of it, but I gave it to them. So they have a picture. Anyway. Um, so if I get into excavation and cement and removal, do you guys, I have no idea who to ask or who to talk to and, and how to go about this. I mean, could you recommend, make some recommendations if you want to give me like two or three? I would, that would be very welcome. I'm, I'm not familiar with, uh, you know, making a three and a half foot by three and a half foot excavation through concrete or macadam. Um, I wouldn't have, I, I mean, making that excavation, making it probably three to four feet deep and filling it with soil would probably be the way to go, but I have no idea who does that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, what, what you have to watch out for is over amending the soil because then it doesn't want to go. The roots don't will stay in that area and it'll get root mm -hmm. bound. You know, it will, the tree will not grow. I mean, right. it all depends. I mean, we did trees down the Man Music Center, planted them in the, the wells, and they didn't do very well because there was another parking lot under it, like well below, like six feet below where we planted them, and the water just stayed there. I mean, you know, all drainage, I mean, there's a whole list of things when you start, you know 
cutting areas in parking lots, you know. Yeah, it's just putting a tree in a bigger pot. It is. Exactly. Yeah, it's not going to want to grow. <laughs> it has to drain well. It has whatever it does. Have. It's a tough environment. The long 252 is a tough environment to plant trees. I, I agree. I, I mean, I, I get that. It's easy enough to do. You just, you know, it's... Now, now Paul, did you get hold of the, uh, the tree tenders? Uh, yeah, I went through their program. Yeah, because they usually do pretty well getting help out there for planting them and stuff like that. You know what I mean? They they do their little things, you know. You know, I because if I if this were if we didn't have a, a time constraint against me, Rob, I would be able to do it much more through a volunteer groups and groups and be very nice about it. But this is going to have to be sort of a power down situation where by the time I get if I get the yeses and if I get all the approvals. I'm going to have to, you know, go to somebody professionally and see if they'll give me perhaps a nice civic discount or something, but, but pay for, pay for it, you know, like, and I'm, and I'm, I'm prepared to do that in order to get this started. What I'm trying to do is, is allow residents to see how the street trees would look and, and then say, Ooh, that's kind of nice. Um, you know, and, Get a groundswell going for people wanting to have street trees elsewhere. Yeah. I'm not in the business, Paul, but I would think whatever you're paying for the tree, if somebody's planning it, you're paying that much again to have it done. I may be wrong, but, yeah, but that's kind of what I've always used as a basis in my mind. So, so do you guys, I mean, that's what was revealed to me as well, Steve. Um, and so if a tree, a root ball tree costs 350, I should plan to spend another 350 to plant it. Minimum, minimum, minimum. Uh, most of the time, most of these contractors will charge two and a half to three, to sometimes even four over, depending on what the ground conditions are, access, and how much they have to do to put the tree in the ground. And quantity. And it all, you know, it's, it all depends how many they're doing, you know? Right, right. I mean, right. if you're working on 252 there, you're going to be blocking highway and stuff like that. So you're talking flaggers and stuff like that. I mean, you're, there's a lot of things to. Utilities? Yeah, exactly. Have underground utilities there. Yep. I got I, I have to ask that question. You're absolutely right. Um, so those are my questions. And you guys, you guys have kind of given me um, your parameters. I thank you very much for your answers. And. Uh, I mean, is and, there... and, no, and none of those trees, except maybe the Crataegus, are native. Um, you know what? We saw, we tried to find natives. We did, Carol. And uh, if I'm looking for drought resistance, salt resistant, uh, um, there weren't, there were, we couldn't find any. That was where we were leaning towards, but we just couldn't. Yeah. You're right. I've dealt with a lot of these plants and, you know, the, um, um, the, um, the tree lilacs are very hardy and they're really beautiful. When they bloom, they make a nice small tree. Um, uh, the cherries, I mean, we have cherries all along Westchester Pike. Cherries are not a real long lived tree. Right. I'd probably stay away from the cherries. Um, Carpinus are also pretty tough. I like those. Yeah. And that uh, the Shantung maple is actually Acer truncatum, T U M, not T U R N. But um, yeah, I, so it's, for, for a small tree, they're a pretty good assortment. So, so Carol, can you run through that one more time, please? You, uh, uh, the syringa the, 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 uh, the Japanese tree lilacs, yeah. uh, ivory silk or the, um, or the standard one, it doesn't matter which. Right. Um, they're very tough trees, they bloom beautifully. Um, we have a number of them on campus. Um, they're very hardy. Uh, cherries are, tend not to be very long lived. I agree. I mean, we have some. We have some on campus, but they're not street trees that we've had maybe twenty five years. Um, but they're not the happiest of trees. Got it. Um, Colrotaria is a really tough tree. Um, as I said, it gets flowers. It gets a little taller, um, but it's another neat tree. Carpinus I like. I'd probably stay away from the fastigiata because even the regular Carpinus has a beautiful um, sort of a teardrop shape that really you don't need to go with the fastigiata that might look like those 
funny things that were planted along uh, Darby Road in Havertown for years. Right. Um, Acer truncatum. Uh, sometimes the Japanese maples tend to be things that seed in a lot. Um, almost parviflora is a beautiful tree, really is. Um, Crataguses also have disease problems. They have, um, uh, there's a couple of different things. There's, um, there's a rust, there's a, what is it? Cedar apple, sort of like the cedar apple rust, the cedar hawthorn rust, um, which makes, which disfigures them. And what's that other, Tom, what's that other thing? Uh, fire blight. So there's a couple of disease problems with um, the Crataguses. Great, thank you. You did not talk about the prunus argental. Uh, the prunus argental, uh, I'm uh, sorry, those are the cherries. Oh, that's the cherry, okay, so that's a no. Yeah, prunus yetoensis. They're also beautiful, but I don't think they work very well as a street tree. Right. Um, they like to have a nice, um, you know, carpeted parkland sort of around them if they're going to be happy. And the, and the one right after that, the Acer Campestra. Did you like that one or not? Acer Campestra. I don't know. I had one of those. I have one of those out in my front yard. Eh. It's an Asian. It's another Asian maple. It's a no. Okay. I thank, <laughs> you, all. I thank you all very much. Um, and have a great meeting and a good time. Thank right. you, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Thanks. Thank you. It's a good starting point. Yeah. <laughs> um, if, if you wanted to, the uh, Lower Marion Township on their uh, website has a list of recommended trees for homeowners. Um, and some of those might be appropriate. Okay. Yeah, Springfield does too. Has one. I, I am going to be running now, but I wish you all good luck. Um, we will be in contact, as I said, and Steve will tell me who the lucky, the lucky officers are in the tomorrow. So again, good luck, everyone. Thank you. Feel free. Like I said, I'll email you my 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 number. I'm obviously not going to give it over this since it's a recording on YouTube. <laughs> who knows who's going to call me? But good luck with the rest of your meeting. And sorry that I have this other this other uh, engagement. Thank you, Leonard. Leonard. Thanks, Leonard. Thanks, Leonard. So um, I thought what we would take a few minutes and do, and I think probably most of you have probably looked at the ordinance, uh, I would take it, um, but I thought we would just kind of review the main duties of the commission, uh, realizing it's, it's, it lays out and there's, you know, with throughout the ordinance, there's a couple other things, but I'm going to focus on just section B here where it talks about the duties um, and uh, because there are a couple things I think that you'll want to focus on early on. Uh, and once you get them set, then you'll be more of a review going forward versus necessarily something that we're doing uh, every meeting kind of thing um, and uh, in that way. So um, so as, as we were, as I was looking at this, obviously uh, the first one uh, does talk about this concept of coming up with a list of suitable species uh, that can be planted, um, particularly, uh, you know, around and near streets and things like that. So that'll be one of the things that you're gonna wanna do as a group early on. And, you know, we'll assist you in whatever help you need, but your expertise is really gonna be what brings in there. Um, again, uh, once you've done that, uh, we'll assist in getting that up on our website. Uh, that's actually number two. So, uh, you know, we'll work uh, probably either with George um, Sheritz, who's our public works director, uh, or maybe Kathy uh, getting that up on the website for you. Uh, and uh, once, once, once I know for sure who's going to be working with, with this group, uh, if it's George, I'll let him do all your uh, website updating. Um, if it's not, then we'll get somebody who will be your contact for that purpose specifically um, so that you'll know who that is. Um, uh, the, uh, so those are really kind of the first two, you know, about what's the appropriate size, those kind of things, and, and kind of, you know, what makes good sense of street trees and, and that. And so 
Uh, I will say that one of the other ordinances that we probably should uh, get you a copy of so that you're familiar with it is also we have a, uh, I say an ordinance, I think it's actually a resolution that the board passed related to uh, in, invasive species. Um, just so that you would be aware as, as you're making decisions the best we can that we would want to do uh, plantings that are indigenous as much as possible. Um, and then uh, we, there's this whole section about um, heritage trees. And um, if you look at the definition of what we said about heritage tree, you know, we gave it a size, but we also said it might be of something that has a value in the community. Um, and so uh, just as an example, one of the things that we think was ultimately fall under that is a tree that was actually planted a couple years ago, uh, but it was planted in honor of one of our police officers who, who passed away, uh, not while on duty, but who was uh, one of our uh, officers. And so it, I think it falls under that heritage tree piece. And so we'll talk about what all of that would look like. Um, the one thing I would make note, and I make note this to you, um, because some people, I think most people understand this, but some people don't, and I just want to make sure, uh, there is a section here where it talks about that when we access private property, we always get permission ahead of time. Uh, just because we're working with the township doesn't give us access to go on people's property. Uh, I mean, there are some times that I legally can do that, but uh, it, Typically, we go and get permission and do those kind of things. And for purposes of this, it would always require that. And I only say that because every once in a while, somebody says, well, I'm on the, I'm doing this for the township. I can just go do it. You, you can do a lot of things, but we can't go on private property without asking and getting permission. Um, and then uh, we have the, the pieces that I think that, uh, that I want to um, focus on on the last section. I mean, obviously, uh, the, the list of invasive species uh, for uh, exempt from protection under this ordinance and update that every five years. Uh, so that'll be something we want to keep an eye on and what comes in. You know, sometimes things come in uh, that we, you know, it's amazing how all of a sudden we get trees in places we never even thought that we had planted something, right? You know, it's one of those things, a bird drops a seed and the next thing we know is look, look at what we've got and not necessarily something we wanted. Um, also, um, if there's monies that are given for the purpose of shade trees specifically, uh, you would help guide the direction and it would, we would ask you for budget guidance on how we would use that. Uh, currently, there's nothing in that fund, but um, over time, you know, there might be monies from the general fund that are set aside for that purpose, or at least monies that are in the general fund that would be for your availability as you uh, have some issues that come up and as you need them. Uh, and we can talk about that as we go forward. And if you need, if you come up with something that you're needing, uh, you know, work with staff and we'll go back to the board uh, with you to help, you know, present what your needs are uh, specifically and, and in that way. Um, but occasionally we'll get donations or we'll get, um, uh, sometimes in land development, there's funds that are set aside specifically for the purpose uh, of shade tree, uh, in, in that way. Um, the next part I think is probably one of the big pieces, uh, that, um, uh, I know that Leonard's concerned about and that I'm concerned about is, you know, making sure that we do a good job in communicating with the community, uh, what you're doing but also what they should be doing. Um, so that, uh, that's a big piece. Um, and also for looking from time to time for grants that will help assist in what we're trying to accomplish uh, in creating this street tree uh, type of approach and, and shade trees in that way. Um, and then, uh, I think that if I, if I recall right, Leonard said that actually some of you felt like there might be some changes that actually needed to happen to the ordinance um, because of some, I believe it was related to some size of the trees or something that was in the ordinance already. And so, you know, if there's anything like that as we go along, uh, I think that he shared with you the intent is that this is to be a living document. And, you know, is we, we always want to make it better and uh, that's the goal. And so if that opportunity comes along, um, we would want to do that. Uh, and then um, 
the, the one thing that I do want to make you aware of is that we do have a requirement that you meet at least, at least six times a year. Um, and so that's a big thing. And we'll work on that. Obviously, we're not going to try to meet six times in 2020. You, you know, you weren't seated until almost the end of the year. Uh, we probably will try to get one more meeting in this year just to kind of be on the right time frame. Um, but uh, going in 2021, we will be looking for uh, a night, an evening that works for everybody and also be looking for probably a consistent level, at least for those six meetings. I usually advertise them at the beginning of the year um, and have them as a set time. Uh, and we'll talk about the tree work permit in a little bit. Um, and that um, will be some of the things that might be coming before you. And depending on how many of those we have might determine if we need to meet more often than just the six times a year. Uh, but that's that, that's the requirement of the meeting. And so I just wanted to make sure we had talked about that. Uh, there's also this, uh, the, the fact that the, this group would give an annual report back to the board, uh, basically what you've done throughout the year uh, and summarizing what you've done and then working with the uh, parks board and the EAC on um, planting and caring for the maintenance of the trees on public land. So I've kind of gone through that pretty quickly just to kind of get us there. Is Are there questions that you have, uh, concerns that you have with those or anything in that way? Yeah, Steve, do you have, is this just for street trees in the public right of way or is it for all trees on the person's whole property? Well, there are some guidances uh, related, but most everything is related to, if, if I remember in the ordinance, most of it's focused on the street tree side. Um, but we have put in there that if they're taking down a certain number of trees that they need to do a permit. And um, depending and on- how, And how many is that? Because I got a lot of people asking me already because I was telling people I was on this and they, I mean, I got calls last night about it. You know, they don't want to start yeah. jobs if they actually have to go through the permit issue. You know what I'm saying? You know? Yep. Um, and in the moment, I don't remember exactly. I'm trying to look through grading, demolition, clearing tree work. Uh, And obviously a land development plan is a lot different than what a, a, a homeowner a, a normal homeowner is. Yeah. That wants to take one or two trees down just because it's either ruining the roof or, you know, just it's a bad tree or whatever, you know? Right, exactly. And so one of the things we did say, and I think the way the ordinance is written, it's, it's not so much, you know, if a tree is bad, if a tree is dangerous, um, our staff, we have a, we have, a, I don't know if any of you know Pete Williams, uh, Pete is on our staff on the public works team. He used to be in the tree business himself. And um, he, he can go and look at a tree pretty quickly and tell whether or not it's dangerous, whether it's going to be an issue of, you know, potentially uh, causing damage to property or person. Um, and so we wouldn't want to hold up somebody from being able to take down a tree that, like, I wouldn't want to have somebody wait two months until they could be before you for a tree if they if it's going to potentially fall on a house or something like that. So now we all would, these per, all these work permits have to go through the shade tree commission? Not all of them, but uh, but if they're over a certain size or over a certain amount, they would have to. Um, okay. so like for example, uh, I believe if the if it's greater than 24 inches, it has to go before you. Now there's no one cuz I know Springfield has the parks and rec guy, uh, Frank Papa, he he goes out and looks at them. You, you apply for your permit down there. He goes out, looks at it, approves it, and then do what you want to do. You know what I mean? That that you know, I don't know if people would wait that long. I mean, there's going to be a right, bit, and that's you know and that's saying? one of the things that I think that we have to look at is this whole thing yeah. and say, does every piece of this work well? And um, you know, that's one of the reasons why you know we'll. I think it's going to take us a little bit to get up and operating uh, and fully functioning the way we want it to function. And, you know, we're, we'll try some things and if it doesn't work, right. then we'll come back and we'll go to the board and say, these are the changes we think need to be made. 
Right. Okay. I so think so the idea. I'm sorry, somebody. Yeah, Steve. So as as a committee member or on the board, if we see something in the town, do we stop in and say, because like you know, at the bottom of my street after the storm on August fifth, a lot of trees came down and, and people were removing trees around their house for safety reasons. But some of those. Sure. Trees, They've been an issue. Some of them may not, and I can't blame them. You know how many how many houses got crushed on yep. my in August? Yeah, that was a bad storm. We lost a ton of trees in our community at that storm. And you know, look when when it's a safety issue or there's a concern about that, we're going to err on the side of take it down. You know, we're not going to we're not going to hold something up if we think there is a truly a potential of a safety issue. It's I don't want that liability. Right. Um, and I don't want the liability for the township on that. I, right. I think what we're really concerned about, you know, um, it's the things where people come along, particularly along their property line, you know, right along the street edge. And they, you, you know, you got 10 trees that run across their property frontage and they take them all out. And, you know, that's the kind of thing that we want to make sure that they're coming before you, what makes sense. You know, uh, I mean, obviously, if it's in front of their house and it could fall on their house, we'll have a different conversation. But, you know, we, we've had two right here on Bishop Hollow Road that, I mean, literally, I think they took out close to 30 trees. One wasn't quite that many. I think it was only about seven. But uh, the other property, I think, was close to 20 or so trees. Uh, between the two, it was about 30. And, you know, I mean, they were all away from the house. And if the tree had fallen, it might, the limbs might have touched it, but it, most of them were pretty far away and they still cleared all this out. And what we're trying to say is that's what we want to slow down. Um, and at the same time, we realize that people do have, you know, you buy a piece of property and it is your property. We, we're not going to control 100%, but we are concerned about what's along the street. Makes sense. So is that within the right of way? Correct. So it's like within the 10 foot right away. Is that what yeah, the Yeah, in some cases is? it's bigger than that. And so that's the piece that, you know, one of the things we defined it as what's in the right away. And then we turned around and said, uh, every road is different. And we don't even know on some roads what it is, you know, as the township. And we're having to work through that. Yeah, I know. I know Springfield, basically, if it's in the front yard setback, you get a permit. Yep. <laughs> that's it. And they're real particular about it, you know. Yeah, they're, they're right on you if you don't have a permit. I mean, I've done them where, you know, like the right of way was 50 feet and they were, the house was set way back and I was in the front of the house taking down these big poplars that were all rotted and they made me get a permit. I'm like, whatever it's, a, and the, the codes guy says, just go down and get it, you know, get other people to pay for it, you know, it's no big deal. Yeah. He's like, we're going to prove it. We know they're bad, you know, so yeah. it, it was no big issue. They just, I think they just wanted their $25. I mean, I don't know what the permit fee is going to be for our township, but it's not set yet. And again, we don't want it to be prohibitive. I mean, the cost of taking down a tree today is pretty expensive. The last thing we want to do is make this more difficult. The key is what we want to make sure is that people aren't just neutering their front yards of all these trees. And then, we no, lose, you know, um, and again, you know, if it's a safety feature, uh, we're probably not going to wait until it comes before you. Now, we might reach out to you and say, hey, we're going to do this. Does one of you want to go take a look at it? and weigh in before we make a decision. Um, but that, that's the intent. And, and, I, and I told Leonard when he interviewed me, I says, you know, I've gone through this before where like with Springfield, like they've said they've denied trees, like oak trees to be taken down in front yards. The people do it anyway. Yeah, They don't care. They, they just pay the fine. Yeah, You know, they just pay the fine. There's no, I mean, they'll pay the, I mean, I think in your, this ordinance is a thousand dollars. I think Springfield 600, but the people just pay it. If you're paying, you know, four grand to take a tree down, they don't care. $600, you know, we want the tree down. I mean, I think people take down trees just because they're scared of them and shouldn't, but you know. Yeah. We're just trying to keep balance. And I think that, you know, one of the pieces that where, where I think we're really after is that a lot of these, it, it's, if you take them down, we're not so opposed to the, the it, but that you, we're not so opposed that every tree that you want to take down is taken down. It's the issue. If you take it down, there is a requirement to plant another tree in its place or two trees, depending on the size. And that's what we want to make sure is, is happening. That's the big piece. 
Um, and I get it, you know, uh, there'll be people who are going to fight that even that. And so, um, you know, I mean, we have, I know some folks have come in and cleared every tree off their property. I don't understand it, but they cleared every tree off their property because they don't want any tree anywhere on their property. But, um, uh, you know, we're trying to find the balance, you know, that's there. And, and that's, uh, yeah, that's I understand. I understand that point, but I know in Springfield, with dealing with them so much, if, if you take down a large caliber shade tree or whatever, for whatever reason, it's a one for one replacement for like a homeowner. Now, I uh -huh. don't know what they like if you're requesting a builder or a site developer, if he takes a certain tree, I don't know if it has to go through the same thing for a homeowner, if there's a legality issue there. You know what I'm saying? Sure. You know, I don't know if there's something in, in that range why it's written the way it is. You know, like if you take down a six inch tree, they want one tree in its replacement. Now, a six inch tree is not that big. You know, yeah. so no, it's not. No, it's <laughs> you not. know, hey Steve, can I ask about what the what we're looking at as far as the review burden of these applications that are coming in? Do we have any sense of what the time commitment is going to be on on some of this? Or um, because if we're meeting every other month, I mean that's a long time for a homeowner or a developer or somebody that's looking for an answer. I would think we would need to respond more quickly than that. And, and, and the, and that, and it may be that if we're having that many uh, that are requiring your review, that we would request a meeting more often. And I mean, I'm, I don't think it'll ever be more than once a month um, mm -hmm. just because I don't have the staff to help support all of that. If you know it, it that kind of thing, um, but I think the key, is, the the idea is, and I, going back to no less than six times a year, is just so that something doesn't drag on. You know, we I think we are going to do everything we can to keep it happening as turning them around as quickly as possible. Well, and I think it there was some. That, go ahead. Yeah, there, there's something in the ordinance, and I can't find it, of course. So but if, we, if we don't answer in 45 days, then it's assumed approved. Yeah, I yeah. think that's yeah, right. I read that. Yeah, yeah, and but that's still a really long time for people to wait. And yeah. so one of my other questions is about, you know, how how is the township planning to, or is, or is that something we're expected to do, I guess, um, is is inform the public about this new ordinance because I knew nothing about it. And, and I would imagine that there's probably um, a lot of the um, members of the community that are in that same boat as well, who don't, who truly are probably in the dark about what the requirements are. So yeah. is there a plan to do some sort of outreach, like go to um, either the, um, the business community groups and have, or if there's industry um, group meetings, and I'm not sure. I'm new to this area, so I'm I'm not sure. Or, or, even, or even Bob Blazy's magazine that goes out to everybody in the township. Sure. So I mean, we do have we the in community magazine that everybody gets uh, too, once a quarter yeah. is is our where we put a lot of stuff, and we will. Uh, you know, probably for the next one. And that's one of the, actually one of the things that I wanted to talk about tonight. Um, uh, Cause in November, we're going to, we have to have something together and I think it goes out in December. Um, so uh, we would, you know, look for probably having you guys help put something together uh, that kind of talks about yourselves and introducing the whole concept and, you know, that kind of thing is kind of a kickoff uh, just to kind of, you know, get people aware. Um, you know, I think that there's going to be a tremendous amount of requirement for communication of this, uh, and it's going to take a, a fair amount of time. Um, you know, I've been here about six years now uh, in this role, and what I've found is that um, there are very few things that we do that reaches everyone. You know, uh, we can do an email blast, we can do a Facebook blast, we can put it on the website, we can, 
you know, we'll, we'll put it in the newsletter. We'll, you know, do all of those things. And then I talk to, you know, if I talk to 10 people, there are two people that will say they saw it, you know? And so it's like, oh my gosh, what do we need to do to, to change this? And so, um, and that is one of the other pieces that came in the strategic plan. And so we really are trying to figure out what the answer is. And one of the things I'm looking at is going, uh, you know, people, even though we look at in community as our newsletter, um, people don't see it that way. You know, I mean, we, we spend a lot of time putting the articles in the middle of that magazine. If you'll know, there's things, there's things from the library, there's things from uh, the school district, and there's things from uh, Marble Newtown Recreation. Uh, and then there's usually six to eight pages that we take on. And I can't tell you how many times uh, that I've had people tell me that they don't think we do a newsletter. And so <laughs> obviously, you know, it's, it's for us, we've got to figure out how to do that better. Maybe and so we are, we're looking at some possible, you know, do we do, do we do a, a direct mail mailing type newsletter uh, every so often, maybe not as often as that, but that we supplement that with a direct mail piece ourselves um, just to kind of help out and draw people's attention to places that we're putting information to help get the information out. Is there a local newspaper that speaks to what's happening in Delaware County? I mean, that's either in print or online. The Delaware, the Delaware County Times is probably the closest to, to that. There's also a, uh, maybe somebody else will know this better than I do. It's a, there's a, a county. Is there still news of Delaware County? Huh? Is there still the news of Delaware County? Remember, it was um, part with the Mainline Times. There was the Delaware County version. Yeah, I I know there's two be. different papers. One runs once a week, and one runs daily. Um, mm. And we made the decision to be in the daily when we do any advertising, so that we were consistent. Um, when I first came, we advertised if we could get it in. Um, the, and meet the requirement of the weekly, we did it, but we weren't always doing that. And so we would advertise in one place or we would advertise in the other. And I thought that was too confusing. Um, but yeah, I mean, we just released the press release. Um, you know, we, we, we won a distinguished budget award um, for our budgeting process. And um, so we did a press release and Delaware County Times ran it. So I think there are some ways to get information out uh, that we haven't used as wisely. Yeah, so, um, so just to kind of build on what um, Leonard was saying, just so that you guys know, um, I, I do work for Department of the Interior. I work for US Fish and Wildlife Service and I'm a um, fish and wildlife biologist and I actually um, coordinate a, a national regulatory program under the Endangered Species Act. And so one of the things that we do often is because our program is targeted to the um, non-federal entities, so private corporations, landowners, those types of things. And communication, especially on changes on what we're on, on new rules and regulations is so imperative because if, and we need to get buy-in from, from the regulated community, from the homeowners. Cause I, I think Steve, you're right. I mean, this is one of the few um, rules I think that's in the township that truly touches everybody. Everybody has a tree on their property. Everybody probably has a big <laughs> tree on their property and, or has a tree in a right of way. So I think it's really going to be vital to the success of this group and of the um, ordinance to really have a strong outreach component to this, to yeah. get, to have the public understand because they're not, I trust me, I know that we, <laughs> <laughs> um, people do not like being told what to, they can and cannot do on their property. They feel overregulated as it is. So we have to um, help them to understand that why 
this is a good idea and to make them want to comply yep. versus because this could flip on us in a heartbeat if it's not rolled out correctly. So I hope that, you know, I think that's one of the things that we're, that we should really spend quite a bit of time on um, right from the get go is, is the messaging of this and how to get it out and, either on the, we could start with the website, start with the in marble letter and, um, and other, whatever other channels that we have. I think yep. that would be just, I think yeah. that's just so imperative. I agree with that. I agree. If, if, you know, we don't regulate it. We're enhancing the environment. Right. So platform, we're not trying to regulate what you do. We're just trying to make sure you don't, you know, demolish every tree on the property. Right. Anybody. So, it's doable and there's a lot of ways we can communicate it, you know, brochures, posters, outside the voting booth, email blasts, yep. papers. You know, you're gonna have to hit a banner across yeah. Westchester Pike. <laughs> tree Commission. I mean, yeah, I do right. think there's lots of opportunity. I mean, you know, this year's been a tough year for that, to be honest. You know, COVID has changed how we do a lot of outreach. Um, you know, because you're right, we have done things at voting, uh, this year we've opted not to do anything at the voting, uh, places just because we don't want, um, you know, we don't want to add to anything extra and make it more difficult for people to vote and be more afraid to vote. And so, um, you know, th this year has just kind of been one of those years we've made a decision, <laughs> you know, we're, we're trying to do what we do. I will say this. We, when we did the strategic plan, we mailed out 7,000 and, um, and we got 1,500 responses back, which is absolutely incredible. That's, I mean, when I share that with other people uh, who do my line of work as managers, they're all like, how'd you do that? I said, I think there was just enough people that wanted to have a say about something. It worked out well. <laughs> um, and so, uh, but, you know, so there are some things that I think we can do. And I think that for this, if we come up with a really nice uh, piece that we want to send, I, you know, I'll go to the board and say, look, you know, this is a $2,500 or a $3,000 investment, but it's worth every penny of that to get it, the postage to get it there. So, uh, you know, and there'll be another cost for the, whatever it is, but um, and then I've talked, I've, I've really been working on the idea of, you know, a welcome to Newtown packet again. Um, so that when somebody moves in, if we know about it, we would deliver this welcome to Newtown packet. And, you know, it could be in a, a piece that's in there that would let people know, um, you know, why, why we have a shade tree commission and, and what the purpose is and why we, why we manage that. And, you know, you're just not free to do anything, but it, you know, I think as Tom said, you know, it, it really is about making sure that we protect the environment and there is a level, you know, let's face it, trees provide, uh, not only a great thing for the environment, but it adds it adds a beauty to our community as well. So, um, you know, and it's a monetary a, value. Oh, absolutely. Um, and and that's a thing that I think a lot of people are in a lot of our green spaces too. People are sometimes are against um, conserving land because they think it's a loss in tax base, and it's like, but there is a way to calculate what the um, what the cost. Um, lift is with um, with having that green space in terms of property value and just the overall um, well-being of a community versus one with green space versus one without. Yep. yep. There has to be a balance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think probably, you know, we... Um, if you want, we could go ahead and does everybody feel like they have at least a good understanding of roughly what the role is of the of the committee um, enough that you're willing to nominate each other or agree to serve in a position uh, so that we can go ahead and, and do that. And then we can start talking about, you know, maybe some other things, uh, you know, setting on additional meetings or whatever it is that you would like to do. Um, you know, between now and the end of the year, and then talking about, you know, what we would, how we want to move forward. I, th I could see really taking the next two months, three months, you know, October, November, and December to really put everything in place so that you would be ready to really go come 
January and between now and then that the our, the staff would kind of do as much as we could to keep things moving uh, in that way. If we had a question, we'd bring it back to you as a group or whatever. But, um, you know, if, you, if you're OK with that, then, you know, we'll, we'll look at that as a, as a way to move forward. Um, but I'd like to go ahead and turn it back over to you guys so that you can uh, select who will be your uh, chair and your vice chair and your secretary, and then we can start making things more official. Before we did that, did we want to kind of maybe have some um, go around and do some introductions? I know Leonard kind of touched on that, but I think it would be great to hear from from the others about kind of what sure. they do. I think that's a great idea. Do you want to start? <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> I walked into that one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> sure. Um, I'm Trish Adams. Um, I live on Gradyville Road. I just moved here um, in 2015. And I was really glad to hear that you're putting together a, a, a new residence package because I think that's, that's um, that would be fantastic. I wish I had that. Um, <laughs> And so like Leonard said, and like I said a little bit ago, um, I do, um, I am a marine biologist, but I haven't done that in a really long time. I, when I was living in Florida, I worked for uh, the Florida DEP and Department of Environmental Protection. And we did um, uh, preserve management. Um, we managed aquatic preserves. And then also, um, then I got a job with the US Fish and Wildlife Service and did a lot of it and got into environmental compliance under the Endangered Species Act. And so what I do, I'm in our headquarters office in Washington, D.C., um, actually, Virginia, and um, where I coordinate a national program under the ESA, and it's called Habitat Conservation Planning. So we issue incidental take permits. So take is prohibited under section nine of the act and there's different mechanisms under the ESA to have that take authorized or exempted. Section 10 is the way that we do it for private landowners that have a potential conflict. So uh, the plans range in size from, we had a, a gas pipeline project that went from Can Canada to the Gulf of Mexico. We're working with American Electric Power, which is one of the biggest companies in the U.S. on a love and state habitat conservation plan, and then we have some that are as small as quarter acre lots for um, individual mom and pops that are that have um, issues. So it ranges in size and complexity, and um, and so what our job is to do uh, regulation, uh, policy, and and support to the regions, and so we we set standards and for others to follow on how to implement the program. So that, and my interest in getting on the, on this board is that um, I, when I was in Florida, I served on our environment or natural resources board. And I was the chair of that for one year. And then I had to uh, resign because um, I had switched positions and the city had actually a permit with us and they were out of compliance with their permit. So that got a little sticky. So <laughs> I, I had to bail on that. Um, but I, I, we've been working on um, restoring our house. And finally, I feel like I have some time to volunteer and we wanted to get, I wanted to get more involved into the community. And I thought this would be a great way to share some of my skill set with my new town. That was probably TMI, right? Too much. That was good. <laughs> that was good. Somebody else like to jump in? I guess I'll go next. Um, okay. You know, I've been in the landscaping field my whole life. I started in high school, did it all through high school and college, graduated in 88 from Villanova. I already had six or seven people working for me. I stayed in it all these years. Um, we are now over 40 people during the height of the season. We average 17 trucks on the road every day. We work mostly the main line. I see the pretty much the best money can buy every day and never get, it amazes me every year, something so beautiful. Um, I think my skill set is, you know, bring, bring what I see from the top designers on the main line to our area and try and enhance what we have here. Um, we do a lot of things outside the scope of general landscaping. 
you know, do all kinds of irrigation, lighting, concrete, masonry, um, you know, the basic man landscape items, you know, planning, design, all that stuff. But I mean, I have something to bring to the table. Don't like <laughs> Well, oh, what's I'll that? speak up, I guess, <laughs> unless you want to, Carol. Um, I've been a, I'm retired now. Well, you <laughs> could probably tell. Um, I was a human resources executive for most of my life for uh, Chrysler Corporation, and Marsh McLennan, and some other companies. And, um, but I've always been a gardener at heart. And, um, and I've always really liked the idea of planting trees and seeing them grow and, and learning about trees. And, and that led me to the, the uh, Lower Marion Shade Tree Commission, which I was on for a couple of years, but then we moved to Charlotte and I had to drop out. And uh, they face some of the same issues that Stephen has um, mentioned. And I'm at a uh, listener. We've lived there for five years. And um, I wish this, this um, thing had been approved before June 20th of 2020, because there's a lot of things at listener that I would <laughs> wish had changed. Though I guess there is an agreement somewhere with with uh, Newtown over what uh, Toll Brothers has to do. But that's neither here nor there. Then um, I took over the outdoors of, uh, or the uh, Appleford, which is a 24 acre estate that's owned by Lower Marion Township, but is run by an executive committee. And I'm in charge of the outdoors and we got 24 acres and we got all these dead white ash and <laughs> which I've spent a fortune taking down and and trying to replace with different species all the trees that that we've had to almost clear cut it, it it was a huge stand of white ash and and some of them were you know 48 inches around it's a a big deal to pay to take them down and everything. So I've always been interested in trees and and I really like the idea of planting more trees in 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 um, in Newtown and and both on public right of ways and also encouraging people to plant trees on their own property. I know one uh, look township that has a program where you can buy uh, buy little trees you know four or five six feet tall for 25 or 50 bucks and the and the township delivers them and and they publicize that and and that's a where they do it it seems to be an effective way they get a lot of trees planted I don't know how many survive but we del uh, they deliver them to the front door and, and, and it's up to the homeowner, but just a suggestion. And so that's why I'm interested in this and, and protecting trees too would be nice. You want me to go? <laughs> sure. Um, my name's uh, Rob Vanacola. I um, own a landscape and tree firm here in uh, Newtown Square. Um, I got interested in this commission. I'm an Ohio State cert certified arborist. I got, um, when I finally found out when we were doing work in Springfield that uh, they had a shade tree ordinance, which basically no one knew. And I was stopped one day and they asked me, you know, uh, where's my permit? And I said, what are you talking about permit? I have all my, you know, all my stuff into the township, you know, my... Uh, everything that I needed. And they say, no, you need a permit to work in the right away, which I mean, even police I'd worked for in the township didn't know about it, you know? So it was one of those things. So I kind of got my arborist because they gave me a hard time. And, you know, I got to know a lot of guys down there and stuff like that. So, so that's basically why I'm in the shade tree com 
interested. I even tried to get it on Springfield, but they need township residents to be on it down there. I even asked them down there. But uh, like I said, we I have a small landscaping tree firm. Uh, we do you know trees, uh, landscaping, you know planning, hardscaping, and stuff like that. So that's basically it. I've done it all my life since I was ten years old. My dad owned the business, and about fifteen years ago, I bought it off of him. So that's basically it. Carol. <laughs> Carol, I think that You're was up, you. Carol. Oh, okay. Why well, don't see me? How come I don't see me? Anyway, whatever. Um, we see you. Yeah, um, I'm Carol Wagner. I live in, hi, oh, that looks like Tim. Um, I live in Newtown Square, obviously. Um, I, we moved here, I grew up in Ardmore and uh, went to Lower Marion and um, I went to Temple University. I've got a bachelor's degree in geology. Um, but I wasn't interested in groundwater or oil. Um, anyhow, through a process of elimination, I ended up working at a garden center on Haverford Road in Wynwood. And when it closed, I actually applied to the <coughs> professional gardener training program at Longwood Gardens, and I got in and uh, went through that for two years. And I actually applied to this uh, horticulturist position at Haverford College while I was there and they accepted me in November, but I didn't graduate till the end of February. So they held the position for me till I got there. So I've been in Haverford College um, for 32 years and um, I've planted a, an awful lot of trees, um, taking care of a lot of trees. Um, my favorite tree on campus that I take care of is um, we have a descendant of the Penn Treaty Elm um, we have a great grandchild. We had a grandchild, but it died in Dutch elm disease in 1977. But we have a great grandchild planted in 1915, and uh, that's that's my that's my baby. It's a big baby, and I keep it propagated and everything else. So it's a, it's a pretty neat thing. Um, but I've been working with trees. Um, uh, the quarantine thing was a little hard because for 85 days we weren't allowed on campus and uh, the weeds got out of control <laughs> and mm -hmm. everything got too big. I can't even string trim them down now. So I'm still working on trying to catch up for, um, for what COVID took away from me as far as, uh, as, far as gardening goes. Um, we moved to Newtown Square here the day that John Lennon was killed, December 8th, 1980. And um, halfway between what used to be the junior high and the high school, um, right off the Media Line Road. And uh, we love it. And um, of course, the uh, Altieris live basically diagonally across the street from us. And um, so I saw little little Leonard growing up. And uh, so he was the one that wanted me to, he was the one that asked, said that I should probably, you know, try out for this. So I haven't been on this kind of a thing before. I've been on a number of committees and stuff. Uh, I was staff representative to the board of the college. Um, but this should be cool because I get to, uh, to use some of the things I know and, you know, forgive me if I rattle on too much about certain things. Yeah, I was the one, Steve, that talked about uh, tree sizes. So we really complain at the college that somebody buys, you know, orders trees and they come in with like a two foot diameter ball on the thing. And it's got a two to three inch caliper and it's too heavy for us to move around. You need equipment and all that stuff. The homeowner, you know, for a landscaping business that's doing these things and can go through and plant these trees like from the right away and things like that, that's cool. But for the homeowner, you know, A, they can't afford and B, they can't handle and plant a, a three inch caliper tree. So mm -hmm. I think there ought to be something for homeowners where they can deal with a smaller tree because if it's taken care of, it can go and catch up to the bigger guys because those big guys mm -hmm. just go through a transplant shock and they'll just sit there for a few years. But um, so yeah, that was one of my, uh, that was just one of my questions. Um, yeah. Steve, I got two questions, a couple questions. Sure. In the um, ordinance, yeah. there was something talking about chapter 104 and chapter 148. Where can we find those chapters so we can find out what that's referring to? Sure. So uh, on our website, if you go to, into our website and type in township code in the search button, 
it'll take you to that or you type in general code it will take okay. you and if you once you get there it, and you click on the it'll say township uh ordinances and you click on that it'll take you out to the general code website who is the one that manages all our ordinances for us um, and it's all online and it's a great way to search so if it refers to a specific area um, or a specific chapter, you can just go look at it that and yeah, something said, it. you know, if, if, unless it's, you know, if, if you're doing something that isn't approved of in chapter 104, and I'm like, wait a minute, we're stuck in chapter 158. How do I get to 104? Yeah, that's how um, you do it. The, uh, I can, I guess we can also go to the website and find a map of the township so we can see. Yep, you can. And, okay. um, one of the other things that we have that, um, you know, as, as we go along, um, you know, our EAC group uh, has been very, they're the ones that were very active in getting this ordinance put together. Uh, and we're very thankful for that. Um, and they, uh, the, several of the folks there and, and several from our parks group, as well as our Newtown in Bloom group, which is, so parks and EAC are actually the township uh boards and, and, and committees, but <coughs> the uh, Newtown Square in Bloom is actually a um, separate 503C. Um, and so, uh, but they work very closely with us. And in doing so, uh, they're, those fo there's a group of folks that are very interested in trying to do a complete survey of all the trees on township property over a period of time. Obviously, we're not going to do that overnight, um, but that would be a, another group of folks that would be a good resource as we go forward. Um, we we like, worked, map, like mapping the heritage trees. Yeah, like mapping the heritage trees and, and mapping. Uh, one of the things that we eventually want to do is have a complete list of all trees on township property. Um, you know, I'm assuming all of you are, are aware of the wonderful emer emerald, emerald ash borer and what it did to all the ash trees. Uh, we went through and determined, <coughs> and when we did this, we looked at spots where the tree was relatively close where somebody would see it. Like we have some property that, um, you know, that's really all kind of woodlands we didn't go in there and look at all of our ash trees but anything where it was near a trail or near a park or something like that where if it fell it would be an issue um, yeah. we went through and looked at all of the ash trees that we had on our property uh, we made a decision to try to save 70 of them um, and treat them accordingly I will say that we lost I think I think we lost, of the ones we were treating, the storm that came in about a year and a half ago took out, I think, um, on the property right across from the township building here. Um, and so we were very disappointed because we had spent a you know a fair amount trying to treat those trees and, and keep those trees and, and ended up losing them in a, in a windstorm. Um, but, you know, you, you do what you can and you, you try to do what you, you can. Uh, the, there's another 200, there was another 200 that we decided that we were not going to try to save. And we've been spending money typically every year trying to take them down. Um, and, you know, some of them we've taken down with staff. Uh, like I said, Pete Williams uh, has, has some good skill there and he, he does that for us, but he, if it requires a crane or re requires, you know, some assistance in that we get an outside group to do but if he mm -hmm. can if he thinks he can bring it down safely he'll do it and if not then we'll do it we'll, we'll hire it out one of the interesting things at uh, Haverford College was uh, we had I guess it was 2017 um, we brought in um, an outside consultant we brought in Rockwell Associates he's down on Ridley Park um, brought them in John? to hmm? is that John Hosbach yeah that's yeah, him. I know John. Yeah, I'm good friends yeah. with him. <laughs> so do I. He's a good guy. He's a trip. And <laughs> how we, they brought him to, in to do a, tr a tree risk assessment on all the trees on campus. We have 210 acres, a lot of forested areas. Mm -hmm. um, 
on all of our trees that were 20 inch in diameter and above. And then there was trees, then they made up a, a fabulous books and, and lists of you know, things that had to come down immediately, you know, six months, one year, two years. He's on a five year program for that. And um, so he's, um, it's funny because when he, I, he heard that I was gonna be going for the commission, he says, I've, he goes, I've looked at their ordinance. It needs some work. He goes, you can, he goes, bring me in. I'll fix it for you. But, uh, but anyway, he's, um, yeah, but it's interesting because, you know, learning about, you know, tree risk and how to determine what's, you know, what things are safe and what things uh, can be uh, inherently dangerous. So sure. it's, um, it's been an enlightening experience. Huh? You know, he's he's a great him. resource. He is. Yeah. He's great. Yep. We did the uh, pythum there, Carol. We did all yeah. the, the the mulching around the pythum. Oh, you were down the pinetum, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. we worked yeah. there. We did the irrigation. And then it, and then it did. I was Claudia. wondering if I was wondering if that was you guys. That's us. Yeah, we're waiting. We're waiting for the ground to freeze up. So all the mulch I, I, we had piled down there last year for you guys, it never froze up. So it still was still there. I know. Yeah. So we just had Ward dump a whole lot more down there. So yeah, it's going to be there for you this winter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, those guys are great. I, I talk to Jim and Matt and Chris probably three times a week. Yeah. Yeah. They're good guys, too. Any I other, guess that's do you have another me. question? Um, heritage trees. Oh, uh, Paul that was talking. What was, what's Paul's last name? Selickson. Paul, Paul is the chair of the Newtown Square and Bloom Group. And he's also the chair of the uh, business association in town. Okay, I was just wondering because all I heard was the Paul part and didn't know who it was. Yeah, we, I have a question, Steve. Are we going to be a, a resource for touch residents? Like, you know, I got a I get a ton of calls for. You never get a call for Emerald Ashboard, but you get a ton of calls for Spotter and Lantern Fly. Oh, sure. You know, it's mm. like. I, I never, I, I've never received one phone call about an emerald ash borer, but I, I was probably getting two or three a day. Right. Enter fly. And is that something we should put on the website as a, a source of information? Yeah, I, I think what will work, I mean, I would say let's work with the EAC and the parks group to make sure that we're not duplicating, but, you know, uh, and, and, you know, it doesn't hurt if we duplicate, if you, if you have something. And maybe we take a link from your page to the link where we have that information. Um, Cause we did put a lot up on the website. I think it's under the EAC page. I'm not sure, but, and it may naturally move underneath this move underneath the shade tree commission. Now that we have one, um, it would seem to fit better there um, based on what I know about it. Other Penn, than State, Penn State has a good page on on the uh, yeah. emerald ash or on the uh, spotted Spider emerald. Land, right. Um, and a lot of times, what we do is we don't try to recreate it. We just say go, for, go from here to there. Um, yeah. When we can, we give enough of an explanation that somebody's willing to click on the link. But it's you know we we try to. I don't, I don't see any reason to recreate the wheel if there's a great wheel out there. You know, I, I'm, I'm all for stealing and, uh, you know, using that sure. to do what's out there because there are really some great resources and why would we try to recreate right. it? Right. There's a lot of interesting chemicals that one can use, but there's also some really cool, like the homeowner things that they can do. Mm -hmm. I mean, personally, I have an empty mayonnaise jar I spritz the inside of it with Pam and I go out, go up right up to the bug and the silly thing jumps right in. Then his wings get stuck in the oil. And I was keeping a tra keeping track. I do not have a lot of target trees on my little tiny, you know, quarter acre property or eighth acre, whatever the heck it is here. Um, but I, in one month, I caught like over 400 lantern yeah. Um, But it was sort of interesting. But there's also, um, I've noticed there's a lot of people that, um, can are knocking them down and I use a fly swatter basically at work um, we bought fancy chemicals we've never used them um, but they don't like water you spray you spray the tree you spray them with the water they drop to the ground and then they walk over and come up the trunk and when they do that then you can swat them with a the fly swatter people are also spraying them with um, 
Dawn dish soap and water, just like soapy mm -hmm. water. And another no, that's one a bad is, thing to do. That's phototoxic to plants. That's a bad was, thing. For some of them, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what Penn yeah, State's advising, because a lot of people are saying that Penn State's ad advising not to do that, Dawn dish. Yeah. The other thing was Murphy oil soap, which probably isn't very yeah, good. Yeah, I mean, soap. you could buy insecticidal soap. It's just as good and it's yeah. safe. You that's, know what I mean? That's also, yeah. It's probably cheaper than doing dishwashing liquid. <laughs> Probably. COVID. <laughs> I, I, st I still like my little, my little, my jar. But I mean, from I what I found, from what they're saying is it's, unless it's a small tree, it's harmless to the trees. Yeah, they're you know, they're not they're really doing damage. Um, you know, obviously grapes, hops, stuff like that, fruit trees, mm. um, orchards, stuff like that, you know, have a problem. But as majority large shade trees, they don't hurt them. Only thing it does is they're annoying. Unless it's, unless it's a red the, maple, red maple and willows. They love red maple and willows. Yeah, yeah, so. they, they can't. They can't have enough on it to harm, harm the tree. From what they found, and from what they know, or what they think they know, even if it like goes on a tree that's like say has Vercillium wilt or something like that, and jumps on another tree, it's not even transferring. It won't transfer like the the pathogens or anything like that, from what they can yeah. say. That's good. So, I, so from what a, they know now. So, yeah. I have a cousin who, yeah, I have a cousin who has an orchard, who has What's an orchard that? up in Birdsboro. He's got 20, 30 acres of, of apple trees, and he was overrun by lanternfly for about three years. The They're next born. year he went out, it was nothing. I know that's I have a buddy that sells me chemicals the salesman is up there he's like they have hardly any at all now I don't know if yeah. it'll run its course and just go or what you know yeah, I heard, heard them all right, heard them I'm counting down two more years <laughs> <laughs> there you go yeah but as a group though wouldn't you guys like to see less pesticides used I see a lot of companies out there capitalizing on the fears of homeowners between mosquitoes and and spider lantern flies it's like I can't tell how many phone calls I had this year talking people off the ledge that we don't want to spray for a few lanternflies and a few mosquitoes. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I, you guys, but I mean, I'm insensitive to the environment. I saw next to no bees this year. I mean, it's very strange. I just think that part of it is we're, companies are out there just taking advantage of the fears and spraying galore. Yeah. And, and I discourage it. I, mean, I just, no, I mean, we won't do it unless it's an inf a true infestation. Well, that's what the lantern flies are. Like if you have a tree that's like a target tree that's over top of a deck or whatever, and it's staining right. the, the mildew's getting all over your deck, then you treat the tree. But otherwise, if it's in the middle of the lawn, I tell right. people, don't worry about it. It'll be like three or four of those. Yeah, we had three yeah. or four of those all year. That was it. Yeah. I'm telling you, I probably had 40 or 50 calls. And like you said, they, you tell them about the emerald ash borer and they're like, oh, the tree looks good. I'm like, it'll be dead in three years if you yeah, don't treat it. You know, and then they call you the two years later, they're like, it doesn't look good. I'm like, I told you two years ago to treat it. I mean, I have customers that I've been treating for probably 15 years now, the Emerald Ash Borer mm -hmm. trunk wow. spray. And this year is the first year I inject, uh, last year was the first year I injected them. And that's good for two years. So mm -hmm. I got to do it again next year. But her, you know, I had a guy helping me that actually used to work for Ward. And he's like, these are the best looking ash trees I've ever seen you know, mm -hmm. in the area, how green they are and everything, you know, that's so good. the lady cares about them. She's like, I can't lose yeah. them. I haven't, yeah. that's all my, on my property, you know. The so. injection really works. It, it, it really yeah, it does. If you don't wait too long. <laughs> well, I was doing trunk spray with like Safari and then I did, I did uh, Arborject with the, um, for the, for the injection, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Robert, can I call you because I've got, I've got one that's really bad, and I've got one that I think we can save. But well, if, it's a, if you have a third, only a third left of the crown, like it, it's probably gone. You can try, but I can't get that one it. is. But I've got one that's in good shape. I, we yeah. just, we, it was just kind of identified last year, and with COVID this year, I was going to have people come out, but I just was too freaked out about it. So. It, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want anybody. I wouldn't in my come bubble. in your house. No, I don't want anybody in my bubble. I'm sorry. <laughs> in your bubble. So, um, 
I'm going to, uh, we, we can talk quite a bit and I'm happy to stay on as long as you want, but I want to make sure we select your chair and your vice chair and secretary before we end the e evening. So uh, I'm, what we'll do, if it's all right with you, I'll take nominations for chair. And once the chair's selected, they can do the nominations for the other two positions. Um, and if that's okay, that's how we'll start. And so typically uh, when I, when, and then in the, when we, We'll have to reorg in January again, and when we do, we'll, we'll let you go through the process. Whoever's the chair will go ahead and start you off. So um, with that, uh, are there any nominations for position of chair? I vote for Carol. <laughs> what was that win she did? <laughs> I'll go for what, that. What is the role of the chair? So the chair would just be the one who works on mostly making sure that the, we'll be working on making sure we have the agenda set each meeting of what we're gonna carry. Um, the chair would also preside over the meeting, kind of do some of the things that I kind of did tonight to get us started, but would do the call to order, would do um, all of those things, make sure that everybody's here um, and, and that kind of thing. Um, and then uh, would, you know, typically the chair's the one who would call for a vote on things, those kind of things. Basically is the person who runs the meeting. And we're following Robert's rules of order, I'm assuming. Yeah, I mean, we follow it pretty loosely to be to be real honest. I mean, if it becomes an issue, Robert's rules rules, you know, is is the is the thing, but you know, we don't get too caught up in it typically. Um, you know, I would say that uh, you know, if it comes down that you're making a decision, you know, we will make sure that you have a quorum, uh, you know, and that would be three for this group. You would have to have three to have a quorum for a meeting to be official. Um, you couldn't do anything that, with just two. Um, if there, you know, if there is any um, uh, thing that came up that, you know, was an emergency, we would have to figure out what to do. But, you know, uh, we, Fortunately enough, with COVID, we can do the meetings like we did tonight. Uh, eventually, we'll have to get, do in-person meetings, um, and, and that would be that. Sometimes it makes it a little bit more difficult for people, uh, but mm -hmm. but you know, right now, as long as the governor has the state of emergency in place, we can do virtual meetings for as long as we need to. Uh, the chair would, you know, like I said, the chair, like I said, calls the meeting to order, runs the meeting, and is is ultimately responsible with the staff to make sure the agenda is set properly for what you want to co cover during the meeting. So we have a nomination. Go ahead. Carol, are you good with that? <laughs> I mean, Carol is not good with that. Tom, yeah, you'll get yours. Um, well, basically, we... It's, I'll do it. It's a really it. tough situation because I don't know about some of the people, but I think most of us on this committee are hands on being out there doing it. We're not sort of computer meeting organized type of people. So it's like. I'll do it. Tom is offering do to do it. Is, would somebody nominate Tom? I will nominate Tom. We'll support you, Tom. Do we have I didn't a mean to throw you out of the bus, Carol. <laughs> Do we have a second for the nomination? I'll second. Was that Trisha? Trish, yeah. yeah Trish, sorry. So can All I right. assume that the vice chair takes over those duties if I am not? If a you're not there. But that's, so uh, do we have any other nominations for chair? Uh, I'll close nominations and I'll let you all vote. If you're, if, just say aye if you're in support. Aye. 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 Unanimous. <laughs> All right, Tom, I'll turn it over to you and you'll take nominations for your vice chair and for your secretary. Okay. Who would like to be the vice chair of this group? I'll volunteer. All right. So we probably need somebody to go ahead and make a nomination of that uh, and then. Uh, so everybody. 
nominate? Yeah, I nominate Pat. Trish? Trish. Pat's my brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Adam's got it. Okay, anybody else? We need three, right? Or we need three to vote? Uh, just two nomin a, a nomination and a second. And okay. was there a second? I didn't. I'll second. Okay, and Carol? I have to get familiar with the process, Steve. And then, and then what you wanted to say, is there any other nominations? Is there any other nominations? Right. No. If not, you can close it and then you call. We'll close that. Yep. And then we'll move on to the secretary? No, go ahead and call for the vote. You have to have a vote. Okay, call for a vote of secretary? <laughs> no. for, 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 the, for the vice chair. So you do a call for the vote. To say call for the say, vote of the vice chair. Everybody in favor of... Hey, all in favor. Oh, all in favor. All in favor, yeah. say aye. Aye. Say aye. aye. All right. I have to get this formality down. This pro <laughs> protocol here. Okay, so then how do we we open up the voting for the secretary? Yeah, take nominations. Yeah. Take nominations. What does the secretary do? So the secretary would uh, I mean, take notes during the meeting and or take minutes during the meeting. What I here's usually what we focus on is we focus on making sure that any action that you take is recorded. Um, if, you know, basic discussion like we had tonight, we're not gonna have a big detailed discussion. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna actually do the first meetings minutes for you um, and basically say, you know, that we discussed the ordinance and particularly the duties um, and that, you know, Paul's, uh, Selickson spoke, so we would record that. And normally, I I knew where Paul lived, and I didn't ask him. But normally, we would ask Paul to give his name and address, just so we would have uh, that information for the record. Um, and then we would, uh, so that would be taken down. That's probably the biggest piece. Um, and then uh, we go through, and the the secretary would, you know, just make sure that the public comment was addressed. That may, we recorded what they basic. Again, it's not word for word. We don't do minutes like what I call, we don't do seconds, you know, <laughs> we, we talk, <laughs> they're minutes, you know, and basically it's the actions of the committee that are most important and the general statements. And if there's something that, like if you're divided as a group um, on something, then I usually try to make note that a couple people felt very strongly this way versus some people feeling this way. But it's all kind of unanimous. It, it, you don't need to spend a lot of time on that. So um, th that's what we're really looking for. I would tell you, if you looked at the minutes that we do, we have action items in on our agenda and they're pretty straightforward and you look at it, the board voted and approved and then we, we make a little bit more detail um, for what the public says, just so that we make sure we, you know, we get the right gist of what they're saying. Um, if there's something that you want as a group memorialized. So like, for example, um, you know, one of the responsibilities is to come up with the tree list. So you probably would have that in the minutes that that specific spot while you were doing that. Even if you didn't vote on it that night and you were saying, these are the trees we think we ought to put on there. Um, you know, you would record that so that you had it for a record to come back to. Um, but that's basically it. It's, it's a pretty easy, thing we do use a software uh that we keep our minutes or our uh, agenda and our minutes in but it's a very simple software and each one of you will receive a log on to it um so that you can get in and see the agenda it allows you to see any documents that we attach to the agenda uh so like tonight um the uh ordinance was attached and so that would be there and you could click on it and it pulls up the whole ordinance for you um, the, uh, and if, if, for example, you know, you're looking at a permit, then the permit would be attached, you would see it and any other documentation that came in with it. Uh, if staff had been out and reviewed it, they would give you that as well. And so, uh, and then all of that transfers over to your minutes. So you don't have to retype it. It's just, it all goes with it. And it's, and in some cases, it's just literally recording the vote. I hope I didn't scare anybody away. <laughs> no, I just got to learn the process. Well, it's fine until you got to the software part. 
<laughs> What's wrong with paper and pencil? Well, the, the, the advantage of it, to be real honest, is it allows the public to be able to go back and see what we're doing and have a record. And it, it's, it allows us to do that. So, yeah. And the nice thing about it is, like tonight I'm recording and we can take the recording and we'll go back and uh, when the minutes are done, we'll pinpoint in the minutes where that was on the recording. And so if somebody wants to listen, to the whole piece or you want to go back and listen to it at some point you can actually go back and listen are all the meetings recorded we are we are working at recording all meetings yes okay so we still have to vote for the secretary right you still need a nomination nomination we need to open the nomination for secretary carol did carol. you volunteer Sure, why not? But you have All to right, vote me in first. Okay, so then what's the next step, Steve, after that? You need a second? Did you get second. a second? Okay, a second. Second. I second it. And, and then okay. is there, you would ask if there's any other nominations? Any other nominations? And then we need approval, right? And then you, yep. Approval. Vote of approval. Everybody favor of Carol? Yes. Aye. Aye. All right, Carol, it is. All right. So you're all set. All right, it's official. Like I said, I'll make sure everything's done for this first go round. And uh, like I said, we're not, you know, the biggest thing we wanted to record coming out of tonight was who you selected and uh, to kind of lead off and set the direction and then. Uh, that. So the other thing that you probably want to work on uh, before we uh, adjourn for this evening, uh, knowing some of the duties that you have and knowing what we probably need to go through, I might suggest setting up if you want to have one or two more meetings before the end of the year to kind of start, you know, get things kicked off, particularly if we're going to try to do some communication uh, for out in the beginning of the new year. Um, you know, I would I would suggest that we get a, a that time set and how you'd like to start that. And, you know, if there's any assignments that you want to give as a group to like what you want to be working on first in that way. Well, doesn't Paul Selkson's thing on 252, doesn't that have a timeline on it? Like in the next. Yeah, month? that's going to have a timeline, to be honest with you. Um, if there's something that this group wants to weigh in on that um let me know but we're probably gonna with that timeline uh i'll be honest with you we're gonna have to get that just going uh, i if it's got to be spent between now and december and we have between now and the freeze to get those trees planted uh, i'm looking it you know i think today is the seventh uh you you're, you know you're basically about a month and a half two months at the most um but well, if it was like last year we may not you could yeah. be into january but well um, the first thing the first thing he has to they have to do is get those uh find the underground utilities first yeah he knows those steps and that you don't have to be so worried about that it'd be more if you want to weigh in on the species um mm -hmm. you know i think that's probably the biggest thing um as a group if you want to weigh in on that for him and then, uh, I mean, I think you kind of did a little bit, but if you want to, if yeah. you want to uh, memorialize it, uh, we can do that. And then um, the other thing I guess would be is if you were against it, you probably ought to take an action as a board uh, or as a commission. And if you support it, you could say we support th this being done and you could, you know, make a motion that staff work with Paul to get that accomplished and uh, in the time frame, and if you want to list specific specific species that you think ought to be used, you could do that as well. Do, do you we'll guys do that tonight? Should we take our, do that tonight or our next meeting? Uh, it, I think that for, for his sake, if you if you're going to if you were going to deny it, I would say I need you to deny it tonight. Um, because I think that that's only fair to him, but not to spend all that amount of time putting together if you were going to say, eh, we don't think you should do this. Um, 
if you are going to support it, I think I would go ahead and say we support it. If you want to, if there's something species wise, I'm thinking he's going to have to order those trees. I'm, I'm not a, you guys who do this for a living, you can tell me, but I would think he'd have to get that kind of done pretty quickly uh, if he's going to do it in the next month. So yeah, there's, a lot, there's, a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of nurseries in the area that will pr provide. There's even like Harmony Hill there in the ground. You can dig them out in no time. Right. Yeah. Availability shouldn't be an issue. It's more site. Yeah. In my view, it's more site and is it feasible and does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, it looks and good. I'd love to see something other than Kwanzaa's on Westchester Ooh. Pike. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. And hey, they're beautiful. Um, yeah. what, what's the. In the right of way for this, Steve, you would probably know what's the like. He wants to plant them right on the edge of the road there at Niemeyer's and down that way. What's the in the right of way from the state that can you? Yeah, plant we're gonna stuff have to get. We're gonna have to work with the state to get permission um, if it's in the right of way. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping he's wanting to set it back just a little bit outside the right of way because then I don't have that same fight. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I don't know how far that, like in front of Neymar's, I don't know, might go to the front of their building. Who well, knows? that's the thing. I don't know either. I, I, I think Neymar's is going to be a tough one, to be honest with you, <laughs> period. Right. I, I just, there's not a lot of room there to begin with. Without well, a, there's not a lot of room, and I think most of it's it's concrete and, and asphalt. I don't think there's a lot of space there. So I think you Even have to start with of, the spaces that are green, you know, that you can plant in. Start with green. that and then work maybe I, on the next step on Neymar. Based on the fact that he's you has five thousand dollars to spend, if he planted in the green space, I think he'd be out of money. Exactly. Pretty much. Yep. I, I mean, I'm unless you get if, unless you get someone donating trees to you, some nursery or, has them and they want to get or rid time. of them. Or time. Or time, and I just don't think. I, I mean, normally I would, um, normally I would volunteer that we would come out and get the backhoe and dig the hole or whatever needed to be done, and you know, if if it was a big hole like that that needed to be done but i i can't even do that right now i'm shorthanded on the public staff group i'm down two people right now do we need to make a motion to accept paul's i would think so i, I think if we wanted to memorialize it that if you because it really is right on it, it really is a street tree it falls under your area i think you should make a motion to accept it and then if you want to specify um Maybe we could come up with three or four trees that we recommend. Yeah. Well, I also would names. say his, uh, his probably for the green space. I don't know about, there, I think there's a lot of legality issues and like trying to get him in the parking lots of like, you know what I mean? Of Niemeyer's <laughs> and stuff like that. I mean, I think that would be in the future. I don't think you could do that. Even get in contact with the state and get something approved before the end of the year. For that, I mean, it's one thing on the other side. Cavallo's, it's up on the hill and stuff like that. For the no, old I'm, houses, I'm thinking that's a no-brainer. Yeah, I don't think there'd be a problem there planting trees. But on the other side would be, you know, the next week they'd come in and there'd be a gas main there. They'd be digging it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he only has five thousand dollars. I mean, we could he could go through that just planting spots where there's actually grass now. Yeah, as opposed to trying to go through macadam or concrete or something. Right, that that's a nightmare yeah. trying to do that. Yeah, let's so, start off with an easy one. And what if we don't spend yeah. it all? What happens there? I, I mean, I mean, boron probably. I you know, I think boron, you know, is wanting action to be taken. Um, you know, my guess is they probably have a uh, a desire where they want it. You know corporations have monies that they give for these kind of things, right? And so um, they probably have some people that have come up and requested something for 2021 that they're committing to. And so that may be one of the reasons, uh, you know, because I do think Boron is very interested in being a good neighbor. They've, they've done some really great things for the community already. Um, and they, just so everybody knows, they're in camp on Campus Boulevard, they're at four campus boulevard. Uh, they're a homeopathic company that's there. Um, they've, they've sponsored uh, some events like uh, the music in the park and uh, have done some other things like that. 
but they are also very environmentally concerned and friendly. And so I'm sure that they said that we, we would do this, but they, they have a budget cycle. And my guess is that mm -hmm. they may have dollars spoken for next year. And so that's what they're looking for. Well, if, we, if, if he can't find money, if he can't spend all the money on 252, he could always, whatever's the remainder, he could always spend it on Goshen Road, which is a much easier uh, road Delvin place to work with. Yeah, the, the question would be whether or not, to be honest with you, the question would be whether or not Boron would allow it in those locations. He, they may have said, we want it either on the main fares or, you know, like I have to find that out. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't know that Boron had agreed to this, um, but I'm not surprised. I, I mean, they're they're very community oriented. Well, buying buying the trees and then getting someone to plant them, I yeah. don't think you're going to get many more than five trees for your five thousand dollars. That's why I'm saying I don't. If he if he has a commitment to five or seven spots, my guess he's probably spent all his money. Mm -hmm. So I'll make a motion to accept Paul's planting plan. Do we want to um, specify that in the green spaces for now, just, or do we want to include the, the proposal as proposed? Why don't we oh, recommend almost... they use the green spaces? Okay. Green spaces. okay. So uh, I make a motion to accept Paul's proposal for planting in the green spaces for 2020. Do I have in, a- In 252, right? On 252? On 252. Yeah. So, yeah. I agree. Tom, you have to call I for agree. a second. So I call for a vote on that. Yeah, yeah. First asked, is there a second? Is there a second? I second. second. Okay. Now the vote. Now vote. So I'm gonna interrupt you one moment, okay? So typically what you would do is you would get the motion on the floor and have your okay. second, and then okay. you would open it up for any discussion. Well, oh, that's right, I forgot to say. And so if there is any desire for any discussion, <clears throat> you, could, you could do that, or you may, everybody may be ready, and then you could go ahead and vote. Okay, so it's motion on the floor, open for discussion, then vote. Yep. Okay, one, to, one point of discussion. Do, do we wanna recommend? a list of three or four possible trees? Mm. Yes. So uh, I'll amend my motion to include a recommendation for species of trees. So do you wanna go ahead and list what those species are so that we have that in the motion so I can give those to Paul? <clears throat> um, don't, do we need to have a, Sidebar meeting some other time to come up with some trees, or what do you want to do? Well, it's got a I, list. Took, well I took a list, right? I, I took a picture of the screen when he had the list up. If we want to use his trees, I something that's there's wires on that side, so it has to be something low that can't grow full size shade tree, ivory silk. Oh, there okay. it is. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, either ivory. Ivory silk or the straight species, either one. Yeah, that's uh, cool. How, uh, how about American horn hornbeam instead of uh, European? Instead of the European, beam. that would work. Carpinus, okay. um, not Carpinus carolinianus. They're a little American hornbeam's a little smaller, and it's American. Yeah. Even even the Yoshinos are pretty in the spring. Not a long lived tree, but they're still pretty. Right. Same, for West, same for Westchester Pike. <laughs> they are beautiful, right, though. Yeah. Okay. Even, the, even something so like Magnolia. Do we Magnol have consensus on a, on a list on, on what trees we're going to recommend? So, it's the Carpinus. The Carpinus carolinianus, the Syringa reticulata. How about the golden? Sweet, how about Sweet Bay magnolia? Yeah, magnolia virginiana. That's a native small yeah. tree. Nice flowers, fragrant, semi evergreen. Oh. 
We typically don't plant them out in the open, though. Well, some of the newer cultivars are pretty tough. You know, everything's you know, tough until you get that year that it was minus 15 for two weeks with the right. windshield factor. I see right. hollies that were down in Springfield that were, you know, 50 years old, smoke out and didn't come back. It was <laughs> so. Okay, right. how about Stewardia? Good choice. I like Stuartia. No. You like that, Carl? It's beautiful. It's another non-native, though. It's in the tea family. Well, yeah. Um, well, tree lilac. That's yeah. The, the tree lilac that's a is great. That's a favorite. Easy to plant. Low maintenance. The Colrotiri is interesting. Not a whole lot of people have it. It's not a, but I think it gets taller than 35 feet. What tree is that? The Colrotiria. The golden, golden, tree, the golden, golden rain. rain tree. Golden rain tree. Yeah, it does get taller than 35 feet. Yeah, I would think it gets big, bigger than what they say here. Yeah. The Syringa, the, the, uh, Carpo the, Euro the American hornbeam. The Japanese tree lilac, and uh, I, if you're planting the magnolia in with some others, I think it might be all right. I don't know. Yeah, magnolia is not typically a standalone tree. To put it in something else, it would look nice. I have to go see the site myself. I'd like to see it, but yeah. So when are we all free? Should we all go out there? <laughs> Should we all do a site visit? <laughs> Okay. Well, here, here's what I would suggest then. If you're going to do that, and so that we're not going to actually list the, the four or five or whatever you're going to pick, three or four uh, tonight, just state that you're going to pick four species that you will come back and give to him um, a, as a basis for him to use. And that way, um, when you go do this, typically we need to do it on the record. Um, and make it at a meeting. But if you're going to go do it and just kind of do it around for just the purposes of the species, I think we're okay uh, for this situation. Uh, but you're saying, what I'm hearing you saying is you're okay with the, with the, with the project and, and we're saying we're supporting that. And what I also hear you saying is that you want to give him preferably uh, three or four species that are um, uh, native uh, non-invasive. Uh, ones, ones that he won't regret. Ones that he won't regret uh, in that location. Yeah. But you want to go take a look at it, um, but you don't want to hold the project up. And so mm -hmm. you'll give him suggestions of what they should be. Is that a fair statement, what you're wanting to do? Mm -hmm. I think so. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I, I believe, Trish, you said that you were, that's how you wanted to amend your motion uh, John, are you okay with that amendment? Since you second, John. I second. Yeah, are you okay with the, uh, with the uh, amendment? Yeah, okay. All right. I think you're, if there's not any other discussion, then you could take a vote, Tom. Okay, so let's vote on that. Who's in favor? Do I get to vote? I'm in favor. Yes. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you're five of you, and yes, you get to vote. Yes. Good. Okay, I'm, I'm, I vote yes. 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 Okay. I think the only other thing that um, I know probably needs to be set tonight is when you would like to meet again. Next, November 7th, a month away. Is that November. close to the election? When is after. the election? Four days after. Four days after. Well, the November 7th is a Saturday. Yeah, we, we probably won't do that. 
Yeah. About the ninth. I mean, I'm just looking right now to make sure uh, the ninth won't work. Okay. Um, so let me just tell you, typically Monday nights are currently pretty bad, although I'm hoping in the new year, Monday night, the third Monday night of the month might open up. Um, right now, the board meets, the board of supervisors meet on the second and the third, I mean, second and the fourth Monday nights. The municipal authority meets on the first and the third Monday nights. Um, the parks meeting is on the first Thursday of the month, zoning is on the third Thursday of the month, and uh, planning commission is on the fourth Thursday of the month. The only other night that's currently bad for me is Tuesday nights because I have the CDCA meetings. So, so what's wrong with Wednesday? Wednesday seems like it's wide open. Wednesday, Wednesday seems to be open at this point. If you yeah. would like to meet on Wednesday night again, I don't, I just don't know what all your schedules are. Wednesday works for me. Works for me. What's that, the fourth? Fourth or the um, 11th. I'd probably recommend that we would wait till the 11th to meet just so that we're, oh, we're not open on the 11th. Holiday. Yeah, we'll probably do the fourth. <laughs> I was just saying, I would have done it the, not the night after the election, just because so, sometimes it's just hard. But um, I, I think that we're not open on the 11th because it's Veterans Day. So, um, and I try to not make the veterans angry. So I, I don't. We don't typically have meetings at night. So, um, we'll do the fourth. Fourth. If everybody's okay. Well, it's good for me. Yeah. Works for me. Yep. Zoom call at six thirty again. Is that good? Is that good for everybody? Six thirty. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. that's fine. And how how long typically are our meetings? You know, I'd like to get it to the point for most meetings that you're probably not more than an hour and a half. Um, okay. I think that if it, I have a I have a philosophy, typically when they go much longer than an hour and a half, they become dysfunctional. Um, <laughs> that's just my personal. Th I actually believe that after an hour, but I, I, I understand government doesn't work that way. So, <laughs> so as, as chair, I have control of that, right? You do. Um, and they will and be, have, they will be an hour. They won't be concise to the point. Move yeah, on. And that's fine. Yeah, I think I the biggest it. issue in the beginning, because you're probably trying to think about how you're doing communication and you're more. looking at coming up with some things, you might be a little bit longer, but I think once you get going and you're doing your normal meetings, I can't imagine that once you get really running that you won't, and you get your species down and all of those kind of things, I would think that most of your meetings you could do maybe even in 30 minutes, if you're looking just at reviewing somebody's, you know, thing you you know you come in you review the plan and you look at their what they're trying to do and you say yep that's a that's an easy one let's move on or you know if you look at one that's a little needs a little bit more discussion and maybe you say we need to meet on it again you know you're you'll have that opportunity you know now are, are we allowed to contact each other email you you are what you can't here's what i here's what you can't do you're you're a township board and you need to act publicly for any decisions that you make. And so that's important and we need to do it so that the public can be a part of it. Um, and so, and when you're having deliberations, you need to do that publicly. Um, but if you share, you know, if you just say, I'd like this on the agenda or here's something I found that maybe we should discuss the next time we meet, that can be done. Um, what I often recommend for a new group like this as we get started, if you will send the information to me, I can send it out to the group. And then I just always say, please don't respond all on the, on the email. And that way we keep from getting a deliberation kind of going forward. That's the only thing you have to watch for. Because if, if we wait a month on giving species to Paul for his planting, no, I, be that's too why late. I said that you would go ahead, that you're going to go ahead and meet together, find some species and just and just make some recommendation to him directly. Um, so we can we can do that email among ourselves, right? Yeah, you can do that email okay. among yourselves. I That's think. It, All right. Because, because it's your first time out and you haven't picked species yet, 
I think that that seems reasonable. Okay, and so we also did specify that we were going to do that. And we noticed that in the public that that's what we were going to do. So correct. that. Yeah. And there might okay. be somebody who will say that, you know, that's a problem and we'll, we'll ratify it at the next meeting. All right. So since I have his information, you want everybody want to get together and send it to me and I can convey it to him. Mm hmm. Are we going to do a site visit or was that just kind of like no i think it's a great idea even if we go you know do we all we get all meters sure. separate if you are going to do a site visit more than three of you at a time please let me know and i will advertise it just so that we're have a what? if there's more than three of you who are going to the site visit at the same time if you will let me know and i will advertise it so that it, so we don't have any issue of somebody thinking that you're, you know, doing, having a meeting and carrying something on, I can make sure that it's publicly been stated that you're doing that. How much notice do you need? Um, I think we have to have it in by one o'clock of the day before it goes in the paper, I think is now the cutoff and it should be in the paper 24 hours before your meeting. So if you're going to be on site at like 10 o'clock on Thursday, then I need to have it by like one o'clock on Monday. So then because of Paul's tight deadline, um, I, I would volunteer to skip on that so that if you wanted to keep it sm a smaller group, I'm fine with that. And I'll take place the next next go. I mean, I know exactly where everything's going. So I have no problem with where, well, I mean, I know exactly in front of Gentilly's property because I we do work for them. So, and then Cavello, I know the, the site next to them. So, I mean, I, I know the site where he, he wants to put the tree. So I don't have a problem with it. I mean, whatever. Mm -hmm you guys decide i mean a tree's a tree it doesn't matter if it goes in there to me you know what i mean as long as it's not like a if you're putting a red oak there it's going to be up in the wires and you know pico or asplin's gonna you know put a make a v-shape out of it you know what oh, i mean please no. <laughs> <laughs> sorry i can i can run you know i want to go see it i just for me always it's good to have it there. make sure nothing's changed I'll take it for if you do it individually, there's no problem. If you do it as a group, I just need to make sure I publicize it. Okay. 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 You know, if, if you go if you go look at it on your own, or two of you go look at it, if you want to get together and go do that, that's fine. It's it's when you do it as a group that I have to make sure that I publicize it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll go well, with you. Your... Okay, John. Okay. Yeah, that's right. You're retired, right? So you have time. I can call you. We can meet over there. Yeah. Great. Do I have all your contact information? I don't know. I, I don't have the other people's contact information. So, so what well, I'll do is at the end of the emails. meeting, I'll go ahead and uh, I'll copy and send that to each one of you. Uh, I'll, I'm going to send it to you all as a group, uh, mm -hmm. the contact information that we have, and uh, that way you'll have it. Okay, great. Okay. Yep. Okay. I'll go with that. That works. Carol, do you? Good want to be a part of it right sounds cool uh, i i don't get out of work till three so okay so well carol if I, I i don't get out of work until late as well um but if two of us can go i i'd be happy to go with you if you wanted to sure to... yeah that works that way we don't have to public publicize it and john and i can go and then Chris and Carol can go. Yeah, because we're usually looking to see what car is trying to merge in because nobody knows which lane disappears when you cross Westchester Pike. I'm not usually looking at where to plant a tree. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's true. Park in the school parking lot and walk over. Don't try to like, yeah, that's park the on best the road thing. or pull into Cavello's. Cavello's. You get run over or rear ended or. <laughs> I might yeah, need right. something at Gentilly's anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. The one. The one thing I would say is because of what you're doing and you're near the road, please always be very careful. And if you're going to be out near the edge, let me know. We'll get you some yellow uh, vests to wear just to just so that you're seen, you know, if you're if you feel like you need to do that. But if you I mean, your safety is way more important than 
foot in a tree. I mean, as much as I think it's important, your safety is the most important. And we can identify ourselves. We have to ask permission to walk on their property anyway, right? It's private property. Correct. You right. should. Yep, okay. absolutely. Okay. Okay. It works. Do we have a map of where the trees are? I mean, it was up here before, but. I will send you what Paul sent me when I send okay. you over your contact information. Great. Cool. Okay. All right. All right. I'm good. So I'm going to, do you think you'll want to meet in December as well? Probably. Why not? It won't hurt. Yeah, so I it, think we do. So what are, are we you going to be doing? Christmas, can't Christmas shop, might as well. <laughs> <laughs> it will help me in saving some money to advertise if I advertise two dates at the same time. Why don't we, why don't we set up for Wednesday night? The first Wednesday of December as well? Uh, can we do the second? Usually I have to close the month. That's late for me. All right. The ninth? That works for me. Marvelous. That's good. Yep. Okay. Fourth and, and the ninth. Yep. All right. I'll go ahead and get that. I'll, I'll, I'll have, we'll advertise that. Um, when I send out this email, I'll include Suzanne, and uh, she's our office administrator, administrative services director, I think is her new title now in HR, and uh, so uh, we are bringing somebody else in that will probably end up taking over this responsibility uh, once he gets here, but until then, I'll, have, I'll include Suzanne. I think you probably have all heard from Suzanne. She was the one that notified you all that uh, you mm -hmm. were uh, selected for this. And, um, so, uh, we'll, we'll have, we'll just get that. It, it's a great place to start funneling information back through, uh, initially. And then Suzanne will be getting your information about how you get on to our, uh, uh, agenda software so that you can look yeah, at everything yeah. and that you have that ahead of time. And whatever the software is, I need to. Yeah, no, it'll it it's it's really pretty easy. It's web based. It's it, it, you know, and if you have trouble, we'll work you through it. I mean, everybody, all our committees use it. So, okay, right, all right, hey, Steve. Yes, is there is that permit ready down the township yet? The, the permit, the, what the form is? Shade tree permit. Is it available down at Township? Yes. So um, I sent oh. it out to you earlier this evening. Did everybody get yes. it? Yes. I, I yeah. did get that, but it, it's available for like, if I say I sent a homeowner down there or something? Yes. It, or it, another I, contractor? What I did, excuse me? Or I sent another contractor? Yeah, that's I mean, fine. I, now you're saying if it's under 24 inches, what were you saying under 24 inches? Um, what you told me before? I need to look back. I'm not. I, I thought it was 24. It may be. Of course, I can't find it right this second. I'll, let me find it for you, and I'll get back to you what the, exactly that is. All right, yeah, because I got I got one guy. He's like he's holding up a job to find out if he has to. You know what I mean? He's, it's some rear yard trees that are like the branch fell off it, and he's like, I don't want to do anything. If you know what I mean? He's like, I want to do it properly. He's like, I don't want to start the job and get stopped again because he did get stopped. Now, how how the codes guy is he like really gung ho about stopping all these guys now? Well, here's what I will tell you. Um, it, we're working in that direction, but we're not, we're trying to be understanding that people don't know all about it yet. So it's not, 
It's only if they look like they're clear cutting, are we making a really big deal about it and stopping right. them? Um, if they're if they're just taking down a tree, most of the time they're done before we even get there. To be right. honest with you, um, but if if they're coming through and you know it's they've taken, it looks like they're getting ready to take down all the trees out front. Yes, we're stopping them and making them come in and. Okay. Out. Okay. Yeah, because like I said, I had different, like this is the guy. It was rear yard trees, way in the back of the property, and you know he he had called me and said something, you know. So I want to, you know, and then my own customers too. I want to, you know, because I am on the commission. I want to do things right and everything like that. You know what I'm saying? Sure. I don't want to. I I, I if, I'm going to interrupt. I'm sorry, I'm doing that, but I would make note that for both you and Tom, as if you do work in the township, obviously when the commission takes a vote on a project, I, you would need, if it's your project, I would ask that you not vote. It would- Oh yeah, obviously. Yeah, it's conflict yeah. of interest, yeah. It'd be yeah. conflict of interest. Um, let, me, let me look through it again real quick because it, 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 I think it has more to do with clearing of trees than it does a single tree. So let okay. me just go through it again and make sure. Yeah, I mean, you could email me or whatever. I, we don't want to hold you up or whatever. It's my, you know, I don't think, I mean, I'm basically the one <laughs> in the tree business doing it where these other, you know, they're, you know, the other yep. people on the board aren't really dealing with it every day like I am, you know, sure. and I understand it's more, I'll, I'll emphasize to people that this ordinance is more for, you know, front yard trees, stuff that's aesthetically in front of your house, they don't want done. They're trying to control that from being clear cut and open like that, you know, one or two trees in the back, they're not really concerned about it. It's it's page, in the 12. page 12. Yeah, I was just looking. I think that's where it is. What is it, page 12? Hey guys, I, I know that we've been at this a while. I've been literally in front of a computer and on these video calls since about nine o'clock this morning. And I'm like toast and I got to do it again tomorrow. So how much longer are we going to go? <laughs> I, I'm I, I think we could adjourn if that's all right with everybody. And since we're just yeah, talking, I mean, really, oh, I'm, we're not making any decisions. So Tom, if you want to adjourn and people can drop off, I'll stop the recording and then we'll just, anybody yep. that has questions regarding this, I'll just walk through it. Okay, so now I say meeting is adjourned? If, right. if everybody's in agreement, everybody yeah. Everybody in agreement? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So right. since you're doing that, I'm gonna stop the recording. Hold on one second. Oh, come on.